Now that all the noise and the screaming has subsided, let's do a review of the Oppo Find N. The Oppo Find N is the first commercially available phone apart from the Samsung Galaxy Fold series to have a foldable display. On the inside is a 7.1 inch AMOLED display with a peak brightness of 1000 nits. This is one of the good displays that you will find in the market today and the form factor as well as the color reproduction and the deep levels of black make it pretty fantastic. This also has great viewing angles and color accuracy because it has been tuned quite well by Oppo. On the outside is a 5.49 inch display which is also an AMOLED display, this time with a Corning Gorilla Glass Victus as a cover with the same 1000 nits of brightness as peak. This display is also accurately colored and the size of the display also shows off uh, the size of the phone which is quite compact and next to an iPhone 13 mini this phone is actually slightly smaller. When you open up the inner display you'll be greeted with a much larger 7.1 inch screen which is where uh, the folding aspect of this actually comes in handy and this seems to be a better form factor than the other foldables available in the market today. The inner screen also has 120 hertz of refresh rate, whereas the outer screen is restricted to 60 hertz. The overall design of the phone is also quite nice and the materials used are also quite premium. Both the front and the back have Corning Gorilla Glass Victus, whereas the rear has a textured finish, which actually appears to have more grip, but makes the phone slightly slippery. The size of the phone is also quite nice and it doesn't weigh in uh, too much more than an average good quality candy bar phone, only about 40, 50 grams over that. The folding mechanism has a lot of moving parts, over 140 moving parts on the inside, giving it a really nice feel and a zero gap in the hinge. And more importantly, when you snap the phone close, it gives you a reassuring magnetic snap sound. This is one of the rare phones that you'll find in the foldables category where you'll be going for the inner screen more than the outer screen which makes the concept of a folding phone a lot more useful than what you get with the other larger folding phones. Now this is an end of the year 2021 flagship so you expect to have these specifications in place. On the inside is a Snapdragon 888 chipset and there are two variants available, 8 gigabytes with 256 gigabytes of storage and 12 gigabytes of RAM with 512 gigabytes of storage. We are testing out the 12 gigabyte variant and needless to say, if you do decide to buy this phone, I would highly recommend you go for the higher RAM variant because the RAM will be useful in some of the day-to-day -day operations. What is good about this phone is that performance is on peak and most of the things that you would want to do on this device run smooth and seamlessly. The UI is quite clean as well and benchmarks are high up there as expected along with gaming performance which for most games will run on high refresh rates as well as high graphics without any issues. We did not notice the phone heat up either with our extended usage and one thing to note is that this is still a prototype device that we are testing and it is not a fully finally released device. So performance numbers and benchmark scores can go up with the final release variant. So the phone is running on Android 11 at the moment and it has a color OS 12. Surprisingly, the color OS has been refined quite a lot for this device. Now this is still the Chinese variant of the phone. So a lot of the apps on the inside and system applications are also uh, based for the Chinese variant of the phone. So we haven't seen are the final apps and things that would be installed on the Indian variant if the phone does launch in India. But overall performance and seamlessness of the UI is pretty impressive. You do have the ability to use some of the features of the folding screen quite well. So you have a split window option which allows you to put two different apps in a different sides of uh, the fold. And then you also have the ability to pop up a window and put it on top of your main display. This way it will not interfere with your work and you can have say a video running in the pop-up while you continue to do rest of the stuff on your phone. The design of the hinge also allows you to prop up the phone. So if you're watching a video, you can actually have it sort of in a vertical format sitting down in a more laptop-esque style and uh, this gives you a full widescreen view as well. Whereas when you're watching a video in either portrait or landscape in a standard 16.9 aspect ratio, you will see large black bars on both the top and bottom of uh, the video. And that is because of the form factor and uh, the overall aspect ratio of the device, which is more close to a square than a landscape device. One cool thing in the user interface is the seamless switching between the main screen and the front screen. So if you're doing something on the main screen and you fold close the phone, you can easily switch to the front screen and continue your work there. This works rather well and is actually a pretty good feature enabled in the device. Another feature of the front screen is the fact that you can use the main cameras and then fold open the phone 
and use the front screen as a viewfinder. This is a really cool feature and will be really useful for getting really high quality selfies along with uh, video logs in case you want to vlog yourself on the phone. This gives you a display right there as a viewfinder, which is a really cool feature. Speaking of the cameras, you do have a wide variety of cameras on this device. A combination of a 50 megapixel main camera, a 16 megapixel ultra wide camera, and a 13 megapixel telephoto camera. On the inside display, you have a 32 megapixel camera used for selfies. And on the front display also, you have the same 32 megapixel camera. I would recommend that you use the main camera because we were really impressed with the capabilities of the main camera. Images are really nice and overall color reproduction along with things like image stabilization work really well on this device. In fact, in the video mode, you have something called AI image stabilization, which is ultra smooth. And even in a walking shot, it feels like you're using a gimbal. This works really well on this device. Unfortunately, it is not available in the higher video frame rates. In fact, the phone can shoot up to 4K 60 FPS, uh, but these AI features in video are only available up to 1080p. So the camera app does have a ton of effects and retouching features, things uh, that are primarily designed for the Chinese market. We are not too sure if any of these retouching features will make it to the Indian variant of the phone, if there will be an Indian variant of the phone, but the features are there on the camera app. You can have them on or off as per your requirement. And uh, the front cameras work okay, but I would recommend that if you want to take selfies, if you want to take pictures, uh, the main camera is definitely superior and the fact that this phone allows you to uh, use the front screen as a viewfinder for the main rear camera, I would be shooting on the main rear camera at all times. So on the inside is a 4,500 milliamp hour battery and it supports a 33 watts of fast charging. A fast charger is included inside the box. You'll also get 15 watts of wireless charging along with 10 watts of reverse charging. So you can power another phone or any accessory like AirPods, etc from uh, this device and charge them in case you need to do that. What's good is that the battery life on this phone is actually quite phenomenal and once we charged it, it ran for almost two days uh, without any issues with the heavy kind of usage that we have. And uh, that was a impressive feat from a prototype device with a moderately sized battery. 4500 for a double display phone doesn't seem like a lot, but it works really well on this. And because this phone doesn't heat up, it feels like the phone has been optimized quite well. The phone has dual nano SIM capabilities. Uh, there is no expansion via micro SD, but the storage options are pretty big. So I don't think most people would require more storage. Uh, this phone will support 5G bands when and if it launches in India and all Indian bands will be supported when and if 5G becomes available in India. What's good about this phone is that it has a really nice form factor and it seems like a better option for a foldable device because it gives you two actual usable screen sizes. You have the front screen which is a 5.49 inch display which makes it rather simple to use with one hand and makes the phone also really portable and easy to pocket this is an important aspect of buying a phone because if you have a big chungus bulky phone, it doesn't fit in your pocket quite easily. This one does and it doesn't feel very bulky either. The smaller size also makes it easy to grip and you'll be dropping this phone less despite its slightly slippery back. What's important to note is that Samsung is providing the displays to this phone and uh, Samsung is really pushing the foldable future for smartphones. Uh, while we may not agree with the foldable future uh, and uh, foldables have taken a long time to get any kind of market acceptance and Samsung is still struggling with their newly launched foldable devices, uh, the Oppo Find N might be some respite as far as design is concerned, but for a lot of people it involves a secondary step in accessing your main screen and that is where foldables are sort of falling out. If you want a phone that does give you the ability to multitask between a standard phone and a slightly larger tablet size form factor, then the Find N is a pretty good option and is a far uh, nicer, more ergonomic, more compact option as a foldable device, which gives you a small usable main phone and then a folding out tablet size larger phone and it still remains a pocketable and a small size and it's definitely worth checking out if you're in the market for a new Android device and would want to experiment with something new. Whether or not foldables will pick up is something that we'll possibly see in 2022. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash the like button, hit the subscribe button if you're not already a part of Team Igan. Don't forget to hit the bell with all notifications turned on because only a few of you are getting all the notifications from the subscription feed and we would like more of you to know when our videos go live. This has been Bharat. I'll see you guys in the next one.